welcome to Making Stuff Up, the podcast by the Clinic Arts Council team, where we talk to all kinds of creators about how they got interested in making stuff up. You're here with your hosts, Cody, Janet, and Matilda. We're talking to Jackson Stewart, an independent filmmaker in the Quinty region who recently produced a short film called The Paranormal Community Program. Jackson, welcome to the podcast. Please introduce yourself. My name is Jackson Stewart. I'm, as was told, I am a, I'm a local filmmaker trying to uh, bring, trying to help bring more productions and money to the area for for a town I really want to see really succeed. So how did you first get interested in filmmaking? So when I was four, so one day, the one day I was just in my parents' room and they can't and a movie and uh, they were just watching TV and they turned the channel and just and the film was and uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark was just starting. And I don't think, I'd, and I was the first time I'd ever sat through a whole movie, as far as I can remember, just completely silent and in awe. And then I was, and then at that moment, that was when I said, that's what I wanted to spend the rest of my life doing. And that's how I've spent the next 19 years is just trying to, just doing whatever I could, getting into doing, get, getting into plays, writing. I did improv. I was a part of an improv troupe when I was in high school. Would try and whenever we would do, I would I, in high school, I did ComTech, and I would always use that as an excuse to make whatever short films or anything I wanted to make. <laughs> when, right. so, so your parents must have, uh, so they saw this budding filmmaker in you, and what kind of support did you get? I've always had my family there to support me and my dreams. They, it's um. It's ta- I'm sure it's taxing to uh, for some of your family to uh, to be told by by your son that you don't really want that you don't really want to more that you really want to risk everything and for for art. But they they've always been there to support me and be and uh, be behind my back and everything. That's incredible. It's so important to have family to support you. That's that is what it's all about to support each other and support your community and your community first community is your family so that's wonderful that you had them right with you by your side it's been hard but i always knew it i always knew it was going to (laughs) be tough to uh go down this route but i was more than willing i was i was more than willing to take the risk of uh doing whatever just doing whatever i needed to do so you recently worked on a film called the paranormal community program how did that come about I had a job about two years ago. It was my first IATSE job. I, it was for um, Guillermo del Toro's Netflix show, Cabinet of Curiosities. I was working as a laborer. And so I was just kind of taking a walk around one day and I noticed this one house. I, I looked at it and I was, I was like, that looks like a kind of, that, it just kind of looks like a very uh, creepy, <laughs> it looked like a very creepy house that you would kind of find abandoned in the middle of nowhere and I thought that's and I started and then just like what any I feel like and then what any creative person does you just kind of conspire in your own mind (laughs) about what you want to write and where where you want to go with it and it changed a lot there was no cult aspect originally I've always been interested in cults and just learning about them and in the summer of 2022 I was doing I was doing a job I was doing a job for HGTV and then I started getting this idea. I started talking with Sarah. And so I got, I started talking with her. It's like, I'm, I got to make a short film. Cause like, I got to do something creative. I'm tired of just, I'm tired mm. of just being, I'm tired of just kind of not using my brain to do anything. <laughs> and I wrote out the script. I wrote out like three drafts in a month and then we got everything done. We got, everything ready in pre-production for november and then we they got we got and then everything there gets because filming is tricky because the first rule of filming is what i always say is the first rule of filming is expect everything to go wrong and if nothing goes wrong something's gonna go wrong soon (laughs) and and so it came out in june so i just want to double back to the storyline so you had sarah kind of directed you in the you know Everybody gets to that point in their life where they feel like, I need a change. Sarah Heron is the co-producer. We haven't said oh. her name. We just keep calling yeah. her Sarah. Yes. So um, I've known Sarah 
since uh since 2018 we were both in the same film program same year for uh at loyalist she was the one that got me that pu pushed me in the direction of both those jobs I asked sarah is like would you please be able to help me <laughs> and she was the best if i hadn't had sarah on there the film would probably still be taking its sweet <laughs> sweet old time getting made She's the best. She got so much of it done. I always felt bad because I always felt like I was overworking her and not helping her out enough on mm -hmm. it. But she was, she really was the best and she really helped get everything done. So tell us a little bit about production. What does it mean? What was, you wrote the uh, drafts and where do you find actors? Like who do you choose for the parts? We, we signed up for a, uh, casting site so then we start when we went over auditions we had about 40 auditions my wow. goodness that's, yeah that's unexpected for sure as far as backstage goes is and the actors that you know you had 40 actors how where are they from so katie and quinn are from lo are locally from prince edward county then belleville and bloomfield i believe joshua jonathan and Sam, or uh, Joshua, Joshua's from Guelph, and then Jonathan and Sam are from Toronto. Hmm. And they all just came down to the Baxter Center and did some acting. And now, let's take a minute to thank one of the sponsors of the Quinty Arts Council, Loyalist College. A small college that provides big opportunities, Loyalist graduates have the top employment rate in Ontario. Loyalist College and their program, Filmmaking, Television, and Digital Content Creation, are partnered with the QAC and Belleville Downtown DocFest to premiere their student documentary films about the Quinty region. And it takes so much more than just like the actors, there's like the whole crew. How do you gather a crew in this area? How do you gather a crew? You gather a crew by people who uh, got burnt out from film school and have, no, <laughs> and have no real interest in trying to go into the film industry after that. <laughs> I asked a lot of my friends from the program, and they were more than willing to do it just for me. I told people, hey, I want to make a short film. I want to give people the chance to finally like break in, get their first credit, and you know maybe try and parlay that, at least like, in terms of local productions, you know, when if more stuff comes and most most people were very interested they'll come for their to work on their passion yes so i just wanted to the film the program that you took at loyalist what which one was it it was um I, when i started it was just film and television production anybody inspiring there at loyalist we're just trying to give loyalist college a little plug <laughs> anybody who inspired you at the college i i really liked working under Eric and Ben and Rick and especially Claude. I was really kind of sad that when Claude retired at the end of my second year, because he was always a great, so was always a great teacher to. Uh, he was always a great teacher to work under, and he would always, and he was always like, if he was always really passionate when we were doing our short docs for a mini doc fest. He would always like give me really good feedback on what I should do and what I did well and what. I can improve and it was always it's always really nice to kind of get yeah so I recognize maybe Ben Forgey yeah okay Claude Claude Garrapi okay. I think that's how you pronounce his last name it's French I don't know, speak French very well and who else we just want to say. Eric Howard and Rick Hodgson awesome so what are some challenges you faced when making your film you know like actors dropping out and i was kind of initially worried about having to find locations because it's weird to have to call or email it's especially for a house because it's weird to have to call people and be like hey can we borrow your house to film in for i don't know how many days your creepy abandoned looking house which is just my mom's house <laughs> <laughs> which we made up to look kind oh, yes. of abandoned <laughs> um but and luckily baxter art center came to us they're like hey we saw that you're looking for a place and we wanted to offer we wanted to offer our place to like our facility and we, we went to look at it and i was like this is perfect this is this has the exact sort of look i want for like I guess, and I guess Baxter has no problem with it. It's like, it has the exact look of a small town cult that's starting <laughs> to build itself up. <laughs> There's the tagline for this podcast. 
and you know like camera you know camera might not work it's cold because if we shot in november and actors aren't wearing the best clothing for that situation <laughs> so like we're rushing it's like all right go in go in go inside the house or like put your or cover yourself up in like a winter coat or blanket or something so you can warm up uh sound decides sound sometimes decides doesn't want to work and we shot it all on weekends sarah and i planned it out to make sure that we didn't have to reshoot because if we had to reshoot even one day it was going to completely completely overrun us on on uh on my money on your budget <laughs> on yeah. my on my loan money <laughs> so you also the as far as timing you worked on the amazing race canada when it came to this area how you said mentioned that sarah heron kind of helped get make that connection but how how did that happen so she got hired on as a covid as the as the covid tester like she gave me the email so i could send in my resume i wasn't working at the time because i already had the job offer for renovation resort that's and so um i got so i sent it in they sent me an email back that said hey you know we were interested in working with you so i only had to work three days most of my day was spent in the parking lot of uh, Sir James Whitley. I didn't really get to do a whole lot. It was, it wasn't. It was just so boring because like you spent most of the day just in a rented car, just waiting to be called to do something. You maybe you sleep. You maybe like take a nap in the car because it's like twenty. It's like twenty eight degrees outside. Yes. You uh, walk around to stretch your legs. I kind of recall they came back. Like, they made two trips to Sir James Whitney School for the Deaf, like, through that. They did some, they they started there, went over into the county, and then they came back and did one of the, like, they had a... I even watched the episode with my mom. I don't, I don't remember exactly if they started there. I thought I was, I, I'm well, they not... they took, they went to the train station. Yeah, yeah. They were, they, I think they arrived at the train station, and then they went somewhere. I don't remember exactly how it went because it's been a year since I watched that episode. But um, yeah, so that's that's that was my. I actually liked. I, I it was actually it was pretty good working on Amazing Race. Yeah. I think it's great though to have something like the Amazing Race Canada where they're supporting um, filmmakers, even if you're a driver. You know, it's a, you get a credit and you get started, and it's putting money into the economy. So yeah. And now, let's take a minute to thank one of the sponsors who made today's show possible. McDougall Insurance is the largest insurance brokerage in eastern Ontario. They care about their communities by supporting charities and nonprofit organizations. Representing over 50 insurance companies gives McDougall the unique ability to find you the most competitive rates possible. Operating since 1946, McDougall Insurance focuses on their legendary service to help serve you, their customers. If you're looking for personal, commercial farm, and life insurance, or financial services, look no further than McDougal Insurance. Our experience with Murdoch Mysteries being in Belleville. Yeah, I'd love to hear about it. The laborers worked, like, there was security everywhere. So, you you know, downtown Belleville. And they transformed downtown Belleville into, like, the early 1900s. Our back entrance here was where they had the gallows. And... The carpenters, I will say, started early, took maybe a half an hour lunch because we were expecting a break uh, so that because we were filming that day, too, Mm -hmm. at Paulos and Dinkles. And they took a half an hour and then got right back to work until we left and they were still working like it was definitely a long day for the laborers on that. Yeah, that's. It's always it's always going to be a long day for the laborers. <laughs> it's a, it's def, it's the most it's it's the most taxing job on a film set. The details, the, the, what they did to the area to get rid of anything modern, was was pretty awesome. No, because it was set everything in like the city hall and everything was transformed into Rochester, New York. So okay. it was American. That's pretty. That's still pretty cool, though. To, I kind of wish I could have been able to see that because I would have. I would love to kind of see because, like, I've um, my my grandparents, like my 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 grand my my aunt, like I was telling her about that. 
when I always would talk with her about films, like, and she would say, "Oh, you should get, you should try getting on the Murdoch Mysteries." You know, like your, it was your grand, it was your grandpa's favorite show, and I was like, "I'll try, I'll try, but I don't know how successful I'll be." Well, they've been here twice, so I think you're, I, it's in the cards for you. I, I go in between jobs a lot just because of how film is, and to go, you go long stretches without, you go long stretches without work. <laughs> yeah, you want to get whatever you can. Yeah. Uh, one thing we'd really like to know is how can we or the community better support emerging filmmakers? I think the main problem is that Belleville, I think, never really had much. I think Belleville kind of didn't really see film as very viable as before. Because when you think of film in Belleville, you think you think of the or TV station in downtown and like the one or two production companies that exist around here. I think the best thing that could happen around here is the, just being able to have more opportunities, not just for outside productions, but allowing more allowing the more independent voices to come out and be able to grab uh, whatever they they just get that get the funding get the support from the town in whatever way they can whether it whether it be you know whether it be uh, being able to get good being able to get equipment for a discounted price or maybe being able to find a place for cheaper than because especially for because we because a lot of people a lot of people aren't really as lucky as I am when it comes to money. Mm. <laughs> I um, I um, kind of, I just was more so able. I was lucky in that I was able to get a good, a, a, a good loan from my bank to be able to pursue this. And yeah, now, it's and, good to acknowledge that some people aren't as fortunate, but it it's amazing that you can still see that yeah i was able to do this and others can't and you acknowledge that and i just really want to be able to know that it would that i want to know it's like because basically all the people i knew when i went to school they they got burnt out they don't they don't do film and the last thing i want anyone that uh anyone who has that sort of dream is never to be able to act on it in any way yeah it's almost like a catch-22 you have to you've got bills to pay so you take the factory job you get stuck in the factory you don't have time to do the film yeah so i will like you're right kingston does have a more active film uh, industry but kingston is working with our local area the r2 rt09 tourism is trying to get some more film because this area has fantastic film locations all the way up to Bancroft, down into the county. Locally here, we've got lots of uh, lots of great locations for film. So there is, they're they're working on getting more films, making this area more attractive to for film companies because then local filmmakers are employed, making some money, and then hopefully can do their own films. Yeah, and that's what I really want to do as well. Like I want to be able to, I want to be able to, in a few years time, be able to come. I have other short films I want to do around here. I have a feature film I'd really love to do around here because it gives off the perfect vibe of what I want. Really be able to bring money here, bring help, help bring people jobs, give people their credits, their due. Cause everyone, cause everyone really, everyone deserves their due. And especially in film, it does feel like often that no one really gets their due. Yeah, there's the, the magic few. but And every film actor, director has that story of waiting tables or parking cars. Yeah. Thank you, Jackson. How can people keep up with all of your work? I, I'm, I, have, an, I have an Instagram. I, it's called Big Jack Six. It's mostly my personal. It's mostly my personal I don't post it very, I don't post, I need to start posting more professional stuff too. <laughs> so I just don't get enough, but, um, hopefully in the future soon enough, I'll be able to have more professional. I'll have more of my own short films and, and, uh, just productions in general to be able to keep, to show people and, uh, show the behind the scenes of. And so where can they see your 
your recent short film? So I, it's uploaded on YouTube. It's called, it's like you said, it's paranormal community program, short film. It's, it's, uh, there is a link to it on both my Instagram and the, and the PC paranormal film, uh, Instagram you can, and uh, it's, it just takes you to my filmmaking YouTube channel. <laughs> I was originally going to upload it to, uh, the actual paranormal film, uh, YouTube channel, but it, it you, Google was deciding the day I was going to upload it, that I really didn't want to play along with me <laughs> on that, on that account. So I just was like, I just, I'll just upload it to my other account. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. That's it from the QAC podcast. <laughs>